Hey guys, what's going on? This is Justin from DynamiteHitting.com and BaseballFitnessTips.com. And today I'm going to be doing a little Q&A. Now, if you're on my newsletter, you'll know that I sent out an email the other day asking for you guys to send in any sort of baseball-related questions you may have. So we're going to be talking about... Um, hitting, we're going to be talking about throwing, we're going to be talking about nutrition and lifting and recruiting and just basically everything um, that you can imagine we're going to cover in this video. So it might be a little bit longer, um, but I, I got a ton of great questions and hopefully I'm going to uh, teach you some things today or help you out in some form or fashion, okay? So if you're not on my newsletter, make sure um, that you go to dynamitehitting.com and you sign up for that. All I need is your email address, not your your name or anything like that just your email and I'm not gonna spam you with anything but you're also gonna get a free bat speed video as soon as you sign up so this video is going to help you I'm gonna share with you some tips to increase your bat speed 5 to 10 miles an hour and it's worked for a ton of people the feedback on it has been great so I guarantee you're gonna love that and you get that for free just by giving me your email address okay so, and then you'll be automatically placed on my newsletter so the next time that I do a video like this um, you're going to be able to submit your questions and you're going to get a lot of great emails from me um, that will hopefully help you out, advance to the next level, and become a better baseball player. So um, without further ado, though, I'm just going to jump into it. Uh, I got a bunch of questions here, so I'm just going to read the question and then try and give you my best answer. Okay, so uh, here we go. The first question I got is, uh, the main obstacle to my game is my lack of mental toughness. When I strike out or pop up, I struggle to control either throwing my helmet or slamming my bat down. Any tips to controlling this? Uh, yeah, man. Um, the first thing that I would tell you is you need to put this game into perspective because they call it the game of baseball. Just like Monopoly is a game or playing cards is a game. Baseball is a game. They don't call it, you know... Uh, they don't call it, you know, life or death. I mean, if you strike out, does that mean that you're going to fail out of college and go to jail? Does that mean that someone in your family passed away? Does that mean that um, you're not going to be successful in life? No. I mean, I think the biggest thing that all athletes do is they, they, they when they have failure, they just take things completely out of perspective and they literally think it's life or death. And I know it's tough because you practice for so many long hours and you work so hard that you want to do well. But at the end of the day, baseball is a game of failure. You have to understand that. You have to recognize that. And if you fail seven times out of ten, you're an all-star. So just keep that in mind. Really do just keep it in perspective, and I guarantee that will help you out. You know, I can go 0 for 4 with three or four strikeouts and walk back to the dugout. Don't throw anything on the field or whatever. I can walk back to the dugout, and I'm my blood inside is absolutely boiling for sure. If you just don't care, then that's a completely different thing. I'm not telling you to just not care about it or just like, oh, yeah, whatever, 0 for 4, uh, golden sombrero. You know, I'm not – telling you to just not care uh, but I'll come in the dugout and I'll take off my helmet and I'll be frustrated and I'll be like shaking a little bit because I'm just mad at myself and I'll take off my batting gloves and I might just from like a foot away throw my batting gloves into my helmet but after that I flush it it's over with moving on to the next day um, so you just can't carry yourself um, you know you can't carry that 0 for 4 night and you can't carry that into the next day. Otherwise, it's just going to keep compounding on itself. And if you're a high school ball player, I don't know how old you are, but if you're a high school player and you're trying to play in college, no college coach is going to want to see a guy that, that throws his helmet and stuff like that after he makes an out. So just, just keep it all in perspective. That's the biggest thing I can tell you there. All right, next question. Hi, I am most struggling with my timing while hitting. Okay, well, if you're on my newsletter, make sure you check out the timing uh email that I sent out uh, earlier last week because I go into some detail about some things you can do for timing. Um, but short and sweet, what we like to teach is dancing with the pitcher. And really, if you arrive on time and on plane, those are the biggest things you need to focus on in hitting besides just seeing the ball. You need to arrive on time and on plane because it doesn't matter how ugly your stance is or uh, you know, if people think that you have a lack of power or your swing is ugly or whatever, it doesn't matter what anybody says or what they think. If you arrive on time and on plane, I mean, really, that's the recipe for success in baseball. So um, 
back to what what we teach at dynamite hitting is dancing with the pitcher and this will generally get you on pretty good time so just imagine really quick that you're dancing with a girl okay so if she uh, you know you're holding her if she moves this way you're not gonna move this way you know be herky-jerky and go opposite of what she's doing no in order for you to be a good dancer you have to be smooth you have to be in rhythm you have to be in sync so if she goes this way at the same time you know you go this way and back this way and it's the same thing just kinda like a clock you know a clock back and forth and back and forth and back and forth if you play golf you know you're putting it's the same thing back and forth and back and forth you have to have some rhythm you have to have some tempo and that's what we like to teach with timing um, so the dancing with the pitcher the whole philosophy behind that is when the pitcher starts his m movement when he's when he's he gets a sign he shakes or does whatever when he starts his movement towards the plate that's when you you know start moving a little bit when he loads when he brings that leg up when he when he goes into his wind up and uh, you know his knees up there and his hands are up here. That's when you sort of go back and you know you bring your leg up. Obviously, you're not going to be doing the exact same thing as him bringing your leg up, you know, three feet in the air. But that's kind of the same time when you go back. So he goes back, you go back. When he makes his move to the plate and strides to the plate, that's about the same time that you need to start making your movement towards the pitcher. And you know when his front foot lands, that's generally your front foot's not going to be too far behind so really just dance with the pitcher sync up your movements with him but another thing with time is just pay attention to the game i mean watch the pitcher when you're in the on deck circle you don't need to be taking a million hacks uh you need to be loose before the game and then in the on deck circle in the actual game all you need to focus on is really timing so use it as a free at bat that's what I talk about in that email I sent use it as a free at bat so when, when your teammates up there you know act like you're up there okay oh count I'm sitting fastball here we go I'm gonna load it for the fastball Oop. okay I was a little early that time so this time I'm gonna be just a fraction of a second later and if you do that on every single pitch by the time you go up there it's like you already had an at bat against the guy and I guarantee it's gonna increase your success so hopefully that'll help you out there Okay, um, hey coach Justin, what are some good workouts, not only for in-season lifts, but off-season lifts as well? Also, what kind of workout do you know that can work all parts of the body like arms, legs, and core? Okay, first of all, there's a million and a half workouts out there, and a lot of them work. Pretty much every workout out there works, as long as you... Um, do it hard, you know, you rest, you have the proper amount of rest and sleep, and you have the proper nutrition, you have good nutrition. That's really what it comes down to. Um, people say that a workout doesn't work because they'll, they'll work out, um, you know, kind of half speed, just going through the motions for, you know, they'll cheat their reps or they'll cheat their sets, and then they'll, you know, go out and party and they'll only get three hours of sleep and then they'll eat crap food and they say, oh, that workout doesn't work. Well, yeah, a workout's not a miracle pill. You got to actually put in the work. You need to put in the effort and the time. Um, so that's the number one. There's a lot of workouts out there. You can find a ton of them online for free and um, a lot of them are going to work. You can find baseball specific ones. You can find ones that are more bodybuilding or strongman type or like CrossFit uh, and they're going to work. It's basically you get out of it what you put into it so that's the big thing there um, and I don't know what age you are I don't know if you're high school or uh, I'm guessing high school probably or maybe middle school aged and when you're that age in uh, in season you can afford to work out a little bit harder because a lot of times you're only gonna be playing two or three times a week and normally they're one seven inning game so um, you really don't have to have too much of a difference between off season and in season training. You know, maybe in season a little bit lighter, um, but you don't have to have too much of a difference. When you get into college and when you have a doubleheader Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then one throughout the week, and you have that for 40 to 60 games, I mean, that then it starts to take a little bit of a toll on your body. So if you're at that stage, then I would recommend in season. What I do is I. Uh, in the off season, I'll work out for an hour if I really want to have a great workout. And I just, I mean, I like working out, so I'll be in there a little bit longer. The most I'll be in there is an hour and a half. 
But when it's during the season, I'll be in and out in 45 minutes or less. And I lower my rep ranges a little bit. I lower the weight. I just try to maintain. You're not going to, because you're burning so many calories when you're running around and stuff, uh, playing games. You're not really going to put on muscle mass or size during the season. Uh, You can still put on some strength, but you're not really going to put on too much muscle mass. So I really try to just maintain, focus on my diet. And then in the off season, I really just try and hit it hard. Um, I would recommend for you compound movements and Olympic style lifting, um, you know, squats, deadlifts, um, you know, uh, maybe uh, clean and presses, um, bench. If you're a pitcher, you can do dumbbell bench. If you're a skill guy, a position player, I don't have a problem with regular bench. Just make sure you don't overwhelm yourself with weight, do too much than you're able of doing, um, and then also just use good form. That's the big thing there. But um, So bench, squats, squats are great, uh, deadlifts clean and press, uh, dips are really, really good for your triceps. That's really helps hitting. Um, you can do pull-ups. That's good for your back. You can do rows, but really just stick to the major things. You're not going to, um, in a two month off season or three month off season, you're not going to put on a ton of, uh, strength and muscle mass by just doing a lot of isolation exercises. So I recommend compound movements. That's the biggest thing. And that'll work all sorts of body parts. Like you said, your arms, your legs, your core, all of that. So, I mean, doing squats, heavy squats, that's going to work your core too. So, all right, next question, Justin, I have struggled with figuring out how to have an approach at the plate. What should I expect when I step in the box and how do I calm my nerves while standing in? Uh, this is a really good question um, because I'm a firm believer in having a plan and approach at the plate, especially when you move up in levels. I mean, if you're in college and beyond, um, you're not going to be there unless you have a plan and approach, some idea of what you want to do when you're up there. So first of all, um, first thing I want to say about approach is know the situation. Uh, if it's your first at bat or whatever and there's nobody on, you know, no outs, you're kind of able to be more of a free swinger. Um, whereas if there's no outs or say there's one out and a runner on third base, you're not trying to, you know, necessarily get a base hit there. You might be trying to, um, hit a deep fly ball and hit a sack fly and get that run in. So really put the team first, but think about the situation. Um, you know, if there's one out and a runner on first base, you got to be thinking, okay, I can't ground into a double play here and end the inning. So, um, hit something hard to the right side, get them over there. Uh, think about, you know, um, nobody out, runners on first and second, be walking to the plate thinking, okay, I might get a button sign here, that sort of thing. So think about the situation, have your baseball mind work, and that's number one. Uh, what should you expect when you step in the box? Well, watch the pitcher, watch the game, see if he's starting each guy with a first pitch fastball, which generally in high school and lower levels, that's what you'll see is a lot of first pitch fastballs. Um, so be really ready to hit what you're going to get, not necessarily what you want to hit, if that makes sense. Uh, so maybe, I mean, I don't know you, I haven't seen you play, but say you just struggle with hitting curveballs or anything off speed and this pitcher, that's all he's throwing that game is first pitch off speed. Well, I mean, if it's the first pitch, you can lay off it, but if he's throwing off speed and throwing it well, and you don't hit it well, don't walk up to the plate saying, I hope he doesn't throw me off speed because I don't hit it well. You need to be prepared for what you're going to get, not necessarily what you want to hit, which would be a fastball there. So hopefully that makes sense. But as far as having an approach, man, I like to get up there and be offensive, man. I mean, you got you got a baseball bat in your hand, you know, and um, I like to use the analogy of golfing, you know, with an OO count, bring out your driver, man. You're going deep sea fishing. You're trying to hit that ball as hard as you can in a gap somewhere and run, okay? If you got one strike on you, okay, you got to maybe pull out your 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 five iron um, or maybe like a three wood. You got to maybe not a driver, but you got to shorten up a little bit. And then with two strikes, okay, then you got to pull out your pitching wedge. Then you got to play a little short game, just put the ball in play. So uh, it depends on the situation, but bottom line, be ready to hit. Be ready to take a, take a swing. Don't be a guy that just slaps the ball and puts it in play. You want to really attack the baseball. I mean, this is a weapon that you have in your hand, so use it. I mean, attack the baseball. Um, as far as calming your nerves, uh, sometimes jitters are a good thing. Um, you know, it just means that you care, but I would say the biggest thing to calm them is breathe right before you step in the box, take a deep breath 
And in between pitches, I like to do the same thing. Just breathe, lower that heart rate a little bit, relax, focus, and you'll be ready to go. Okay, this person says, I think too much. Okay, well, the easy answer to that is stop thinking. Stop thinking so much. I know that's easier said than done, obviously, but um, you really have to just try to stop thinking so much. Have a little fun. Like I said before, it's a game, so try to have some fun. I think that'll help you stop thinking so much and really just play, man. Just play. You got to get into that that groove where you're so focused and stuff. You ever notice when you're hitting and you get a base hit? And or maybe it's a double or a home run or whatever. And later on, when you think about me, like, man, what was going through my head when I was hitting? And you realize nothing, nothing was going through my head except, I guess, see the ball and hit it. So uh, dumb it down. You don't need to think too much, man. Just, just maybe, maybe you're overcomplicating hitting in general. So you don't have to think too much, man. I mean, dumb it down a little bit. See the ball and put a good swing on it. Put the ball in play. Good things will happen. That's that's a, a big thing. Okay, this is a good one. Explain hitting down on the ball and backspin, please. Okay, so the first part of your question, hitting down on the ball, that's actually a misconception. That's a myth. You watch any big leaguer swing in slow motion, and they're not hitting down on the baseball. So um, I have a, a baseball and a bat here, and I'm just going to do a quick demonstration. Okay, so if hitting down on the ball, that's how a lot of people I talk to, they think – that backspin is created by hitting down on the ball, which it can be, but that's a very ineffective way. It's not very efficient. Um, I mean, that's the worst way to create backspin, and that's not how pros do it. So just think about a pitcher is standing on a mound, and so obviously that's going to put him above ground, even higher than the hitter. And so when he releases the ball, it's coming at a downward angle. Okay, so it's coming like this. When it releases out of his hand, it's coming at a downward angle. Okay, so something like that. I mean, it's not much, but it's coming at a downward angle. If a, if a baseball player at the plate, if a hitter is trying to swing down on a pitch that's already going down, he literally has, I'll demonstrate it with my hands, this is, this is the pitch. It's coming down like this, and this is the hitter's bat coming down like this. Those points, if you think about straight lines, those points can only intersect at one spot, and that's it. If you're a little early, you're going to miss. If you're a little late, you're going to miss. So you have to be on perfect time in order to do that. Now, what big league hitters do, they actually swing with a slight uppercut. Now, it's not an uppercut fly ball swing. It's just very, very slight, a few degrees. But the pitch is coming down, and I always talk about arriving on time and on plane. So what big league hitters will do is they their bat will be at a slight, if this is coming down, it'll be at a slight uppercut. And so that way, if they're a little bit early uh, on a pitch, they can still hit it out here. If they're a little bit late and the ball is traveling deeper, they're still already on plane, so they can hit a little bit further back in their stance. And if they're perfectly on time, that's when you see those home runs happen. Now, as far as the backspin part, I mean, that'll create backspin alone, being on plane and on time. But uh, for backspin, what I like to focus on is hitting the inside part of the baseball. You hear a lot of guys talk about that. And if you focus on watching and hitting this inside part of the baseball, that's going to create that backspin uh, that you're looking for. So uh, bottom line, uh, don't believe the hype that backspin is created by swinging down on the ball. That's not how it's done. That's not how pro hitters do it. You don't have to believe me on that. You can go watch video and see that professional hitters do not swing down at the ball like that. So um, that's just my two cents there. Okay, I have problems making contact with the ball at the plate. Okay, uh, I don't know you, obviously, um, haven't seen you swing, but my guess is you're not really seeing the ball as well as you would like to or you should be. Um, and, you know, I've been there. Uh, it's happened to me before. Um, and one thing I can recommend, one drill I can recommend you do is play a little pepper. Uh, you probably heard of that. You might have played it before. I'm guessing you probably have. But get, you know, 10 feet away. Get a buddy or a couple buddies. Get 10 feet away. Um take your dad out in the backyard or whatever. And what you want to do is you want to have a bat and you want to shorten up and big time, not just choke up a little bit. I mean, big time like this. Uh, so, I mean, that's a decent amount there. You want to just shorten up and really focus on all he's going to do from 10 feet away is dart the ball in there. And you just want to focus on 
not really loading or striding or doing anything like that, just kind of taking your hands at the ball and making contact and hitting the ball directly at him uh, on the ground, obviously. And that will not only help you with your hand-eye coordination and just making contact and putting the ball in play, but it will also help you um, with uh, your back control and having a little bit of direction and just control with where you're going to put the ball on the field. So that really helps me. Another thing that helps me is going in the cage and eliminating the, um, the load and the stride and all that, not focusing on it. And really just having somebody throw me light BP and focus on watching the ball all the way to the bat uh, and just, you know, not really full swings or anything, just kind of focusing on watching the ball all the way and then do that before I jump into my actual BP routine. So that'll probably help you. But yeah, man, making contact, you just have to, you have to see the ball. I mean, try to eliminate your head movement as much as possible and you just really got to focus on seeing it. Okay, next question. I just really have no confidence when I'm batting and I can't hit the outside pitch. Well, first of all, if you want to play at the college level, the next level, you need to learn how to hit the outside pitch. And that's, again, maybe easier said than done, but some ridiculous number like 70% of strikeouts occur on the outer half of the plate. So you really have to learn how to hit that outside pitch. And it comes with practice, you know, really focus on it during BP. And it all comes down to contact points, really. I mean, if uh, if I just stand up right now really quick, um, if, if you get an inside pitch, obviously you're going to hit that pitch a little bit more out in front. If you get a pitch right over the middle, you're going to allow it to travel just a little bit more. And on the outer half, you can let it travel even a little bit more. Now, it's still going to be uh, – you're still going to be – hitting it in front of the plate, contrary to what a lot of people will think, even on an outside pitch, you're still going to be making contact in front of the plate. But it's really about just letting the ball travel a little bit more. So, I mean, that, that, that should help you. Think about your contact points. You don't hit an inside pitch at the exact same point or position than you would an outside pitch. And confidence, man, confidence comes with success, plain and simple. Uh, the more success you have, I think the more confident you're going to be. And that really comes down to you need to drill it. I mean, you need to take a lot of BP. You need to take a lot of hacks. You need to get comfortable with your swing. Because if you're, if you're a comfortable hitter in the box, you're going to be an effective hitter and a successful hitter. So um, to have confidence, you need to have confidence in every single pitch in pretty much every single location. So it all comes down to hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting just uh, repetitions, taking a lot of batting practice, taking a lot of in-game um, at bats, you know, making your BP a little bit more challenging instead of just hitting 40 mile an hour groove fastballs, you know, having to mix in locations and breaking balls and all that sort of thing. That'll really, really help your confidence. And, uh, like I said, man, it's a game, have fun. Don't take it too much out of perspective, but confidence comes with success. So, um, you know, confidence, you can't just flip a switch and say, oh, I'm confident all of a sudden. Wow. You know, it comes when that day you go two for three or three for four, or, you know, you hit four bombs in BP and you're feeling good. So, um, it's just really something you have to work hard and, you know, keep swinging, keep, uh, repping things out and eventually confidence will come. Okay, if it's possible for you having time, I want you to show me some tips or techniques for throwing accuracy. I'm a second baseman and I've played for about three years, about to be four, and I'm still kind of struggling with my throwing. If you can maybe teach me some tips on a video or reply to this, it would be greatly appreciated. Okay, so the first thing, throwing, because I've been there. I used to play a little infield and uh, sometimes I'd get the yips when I'd play second base, you know, that short throw. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but you get a ground ball and it's so short and it's almost like you're overthinking the process and you throw the ball away from second base. I've been there. I've been been in your shoes. Um, not sure if you're throwing balls away or whatever, but yeah, throwing accuracy. Again, it comes down to repetition and make sure you're throwing a lot. That's one of the big things is just throw and throw and throw. You can't expect to be good at something without doing it a lot. So throw a lot. But something that really helped me, and I'm going to show you right now, dumb, dumb the game down. Uh, go back to the simple things, the fundamentals. So I'm going to show you the grip. Okay, so obviously you got a baseball here. One thing that I notice that I do, first of all, make sure you have a four-seam grip. Don't be just randomly gripping it or two-seam or whatever. Make sure it's a four-seam grip. But sometimes what I notice when I'm struggling with my accuracy is I'll have my fingers too wide. 
I mean, this is an exaggeration. They're never that wide. But sometimes, you know, my, my fingers will get as wide as like that. And uh, sometimes if you if you look at my thumb here, sometimes my thumb will be on the side a little bit more instead of back here like this. So make sure your thumb is underneath the baseball. Make sure you're not you're not choking it like this. Make sure you have some space in between. And then with your fingers, make sure uh, they don't have to be perfectly close together uh, like this, but make sure they're they're not super far spread apart like that. I like to keep mine now. Uh, and I'm pretty accurate now. I like to keep them like that, just a little bit of space in between them. Um, and what that, what I, I think at least that does is if they're wide like this, when you release the ball, it has a tendency when they're wide, if you have a little bit more pressure on one finger or another, it might get pushed a little bit to the left or pushed a little bit to the right. And when your fingers are that wide, you know, the margin for error is greater. So it's, it, I mean, you're going to be maybe 10 feet per side if you have your, your fingers this wide. If you only have your fingers this wide and, or if they're right on top of each other and you, you know, one finger is stronger than the other, maybe you're narrowing that window down tremendously to maybe two or three feet on each side. So that's something that's helped me, man. Um, just focus on the little things, the grip, make sure your grip's solid. Uh, you can play games, you can get a partner and uh, make it so, you know, after you get a certain distance away, maybe 60 feet away, you can keep playing it all the way out to long toss if you want. If you hit them in the chest, it's three points. If you hit them in the face, um, not literally, but if you if he catches the ball right here in front of his face, that's five points. And if it's anywhere in your body, it's one point. But anywhere outside, it's zero. So you can play till 21 or play till 10 or whatever the case may be. But that'll help. I did that all year last year actually in college and uh, with a buddy of mine. And I felt like my accuracy even got better. So that should help. All right. I've been in a bit of a slump lately. The only hits I have in the last two weeks have been on a bunt and an infield single. Any tips on how to get out of this? Um, the first thing is recognize it's going to happen. Uh, baseball is a game of failure. Like I, like I said, I know you know this. If you fail seven times out of ten, you're going to be an all-star. And big league guys, I mean, they have slumps all the time. You look at um, Carlos Gonzalez of the Colorado Rockies. This year right now, in 2015, he's he's struggling at this point. He's hitting about 180, and uh, with one home run, I mean, it was a monster home run. But other than that, he hasn't really done much. But, you know, he's he's been a batting champ before, and he'll probably turn it around and have a really good season. So um, I would say that recognize that slumps are going to happen is the first thing. The second thing, stop worrying so much about your mechanics because – Generally, slumps don't happen because of mechanics. They happen because, you know, your mental approach isn't there. You're maybe you're swinging at pitches out of the zone. Maybe you're just hitting balls right at people. So uh, a lot of the times, I know it's tough, but as soon as you get in a slump, you're like, all right, all right, I need to change my stance. I need to. I'm gonna start, you know, wiggling my bat more, having my hands, my elbow up or down, or you know, guys start changing a million different things. They're open or closed or leg kick or just like a toe raise or whatever, and Sure, you can make little adjustments like that. You know, for example, if your head's moving too much, if you recorded yourself and your head's moving way too much because you're doing a leg kick, well, maybe just you know shorten that to where it's just kind of like you lift your heel and then put it back down. Maybe that'll help. So you can do little adjustments, but don't do anything major. Um, and for getting out of a slump, man, just keep swinging, keep putting the ball in play, focus on that, focus on having fun, being a good teammate, and. You know, treat every at bat like it's a new day and, you know, opening day, your first at bat of the year. And, uh, you know, you'll get out of the slump in no time. I, I have no doubt in my mind you'll get out of it. You've probably had slumps before and you've gotten out of them just fine. You'll do the same here. <clears throat> For some reason, no matter how hard I try, my lower half won't stay back on my swing. And I would like to hear what you have to say about using your hips in a swing. I don't really get how hips have anything to do with a swing. Okay, well, your hips and your legs and your core have a ton to do with your swing. Um, you know, your legs and your core, the good hitters, it's not like they just load and they do something superficial and then they swing all hands or arms or whatever. You watch those guys that have good timing and good power and stuff, and they're actually... 
Um, they're not artificially pushing their hands back or anything like that. When they load, their hands pretty much stay in the same spot, and it's not till they start driving forward that their hands, because their body's going forward so quickly, um, th- their hands kind of go back and create like a whip-like effect. And that's what I'm talking about in my bat speed video, actually, at dynamitehitting.com. You shouldn't artificially do anything in your swing. It, it Everything happens due to something else, due to a different... Um, aspect of your swing so you know your hand should stay pretty quiet in your load and then when you go forward your momentum going forward and your torso and your legs and that power going forward is going to drive your hands back a little bit and then from here from this position here my you know I have I'll just stand up so from this position here I have flex in my in my torso all from, from down here for like from my lats all the way down you know, even through my legs, I have some flex here, some coil. I'm coiled up like a spring. And, uh, I mean, your legs and your hips and stuff, they're, they're critical in a swing. That's that's what, when you get here, um, you know, your, your first move, it's not to throw your hands. It's, it's to start firing your hips and your torso. It all works together at the same time and really just pulls all this, your torso and your legs, just kind of pull the bat through the zone. And it's not till you use your hands till the last little bit. I mean, I can literally be here and I'm not going to move my hands at all. And if I just turn, look how far they've come. And all I have to do is, you know, kind of flick the wrist. So, um, I mean, your hips and your legs and stuff, that's, that's critical. That's how you, that's how you get power. Um, and your lower half won't stay back. You know, I'm, I haven't seen your swing. So, I mean, it's really kind of hard for me to answer this question. When I hear that your lower back's not staying back, or um, your your lower half isn't staying back, I, I almost think that your swing you're kind of you're kind of like going forward, like pushing off this back side, and then your hands are all the way back here, and you're kind of late. Uh, really, you just need to focus on staying balanced, keeping your head in between your feet. I think that'll help you a lot because if you get out like this your head's over your front foot and you know if you keep it between your feet that should help you stay balanced um i don't know that's that's a tough question to answer though man uh if you want you can send me a video of your swing and i'll try and dissect it a little bit more but that's that's kind of tough to to read and help you out with so hopefully that helped a little bit okay i'm struggling the most with my hitting for sure okay well uh, it's kind of generic. Um, I don't know what you're really struggling with, but yeah, man, hitting's tough. You just got to stick with it. If you really need a lot of help, go check out dynamitehitting.com. I recommend that for little leaguers all the way to professional players. Okay. I think I struggle most with arm strength, but I don't think it's necessarily that I'm weak so much as it is. I just don't know what goes into throwing harder. I would say I throw mid-60s max as a 16-year-old, but I mostly just use my arm. I don't understand how to use your core and legs to really push off and get rotational power behind the throw. This also is my problem in hitting. Uh, My question is, how do you learn to utilize your lower half and your core while hitting, but especially while throwing? I think the big thing... I really like to use extremes, you know, so does my dad. That really just helps coaching, I think. Um, so in order, I mean, you, you, you say that you're using your arm, and if you can feel that, then I guarantee that's, I mean, your arm's probably sore all the time and stuff, and you're probably just pretty much using your arm. So the biggest thing, I mean, how, you don't, you said you don't understand how to use your legs and all that type of stuff when you're hitting and throwing. A big, a big thing that I recommend you do is really over-exaggerate it, like, uh, Sorry, I'm sitting down, standing up, and doing all that, but I'm trying to show you guys, provide as much value as I can. Um, so for your throwing, uh, over-exaggerate it. I mean, if you're just playing catch or whatever, how do you use your legs? Well, you, you use your legs. I mean, so so get on your back foot, you know, transfer your weight to your backside, and then when, you, when you're, instead of just kind of like taking a, a step, going through the motions, and then using your arm, you know, Get on your backside and feel feel that feel that weight get into your backside and then explode forward and um, just just focus on almost not trying to throw too hard but 
trying to focus on using your legs more and just at the end, you know, your arm just kind of goes along for the ride. I think that'll help. And, you know, for hitting, hitting is not something that you just use your hands. I mean, you're never going to be a successful hitter and a powerful hitter able to drive balls all over the field if you just kind of flick your hands through the zone. So that's another big thing. Uh, in order to get the feel for using your legs and your core, you know, I recommend not doing this in a game, but for practice, go to the extremes, you know, take a big load. I feel all my weights literally on my back leg right now. If I feel my leg right now, as I'm doing this, my legs nice and tight, you know, it's, it's hard. My muscles are flexed. So, you know, really load big, take a big stride and explode with, with your legs. I mean, it's all about repetition. That's how you, you get things done. That's how, uh, that's how great baseball players are made is repetition. Something that I also like to do for the hitting aspect is just put the ball or put the bat on your neck right here, not back here or whatever. Put it on your neck and put the knob facing towards the catcher, okay? And stand, get into your, get into your uh, regular stance, okay? And then bring your feet close together. So now my feet are literally probably three, three inches apart, okay? So I'm just like this. You don't have to be hunched over or anything. Just stand up. And then what I want you to do is keep your keep your uh, bat on your neck, but go into a little bit of low, just kind of like a weight transfer back. And then what I want you to do is take a big stride forward. So this is from this angle, a little bit of weight back, a big stride forward. And then what I want you to do is try to explode your back knee and make it touch your front knee. And that will really, just doing that, um, it'll, you'll have to go slow at first, but then you can speed up, uh, and it'll eventually look something like this. And just like that, I mean, you don't, I didn't do anything with my hands. I didn't even move them. Just keep your hands like this and really focus on using your torso, and that's what you'll start to feel when you're hitting. So just go like this. Here's it one more time. And I didn't move my hands. Uh, I'm not hitting a ball or anything like that, but that'll help you get that feel. So um, just just keep practicing, keep working on it, man. You'll get it. I'm out of breath. All right, my main problem is that I can drive the ball to right field as a right-handed hitter. I just don't swing at that pitch during games due to lack of confidence. Any advice on hitting the ball to the opposite field? Um, just... Like I said, confidence comes with success. So keep working on BP. Keep having your coaches or whoever throws to you pound that outside corner and keep taking the ball that way. Um, and really just have confidence in yourself. Have faith in yourself. Trust yourself that in a game you can do it. And something that you can think about, you know, not necessarily during a game because you shouldn't be thinking too much in the box, but something that you can have in the back of your mind when you're at practice is hit the ball where it's pitched. If it's an inside pitch, you know, obviously you're going to pull that thing. You're not going to try to keep your hands super close to your body and hit a weak ground ball to the right side. No, you're going to pull that thing and hit it 450 feet, you know, try to at least. Um, if it's right over the middle of the plate, you're going to try and hit it right back at the pitcher. And if it's outside, you're going to try and hit it the other way at opposite field. So hit it where it's pitched. That will help you out. And confidence comes. Confidence comes. You just got to keep working on it. Keep working on that pitch. And eventually you'll be like, man, I can hit this. And then just start swinging at it in game. I mean, you can do it. Have faith in yourself, all right? Okay, I'm a freshman in high school. I have hopes to play college baseball at a small Division I school in the MAC conference. I play JV and dress varsity on some occasions for my high school team. Play summer ball, uh, 15U, but I'm playing up this year on a 16U team. I'm pitching, 3-1 and one record. Fastball around 75 miles an hour. Wondering on ways to improve velocity and also how to get my name out to colleges and stuff. Do I make a film of game tapes or do I just email them? Um, okay, so here's the thing. I'm not a pitcher. I've been a pitcher a little bit in high school, um, but I, I'm not I'm not a pitcher. I don't have any courses on pitching or anything like that because that's not my expertise. Uh, so I can't help you a ton as far as pitching. Um, I know that getting in the weight room and stuff is very important. Uh, for any player, but for pitchers looking to increase your velocity, getting in the weight room, doing a lot of uh, 
of leg work, actually squats and making sure that your legs are in shape and strong. That'll help you out a lot. People still don't see how using your legs and your core and stuff directly relates to throwing and all that, but you use your, you have to use your entire body throughout, throughout every motion that you make athletically. So, um, get in the weight room. That's one thing I can recommend to you. Obviously pitchers a little bit more than position players have to do a little bit more like tubing exercises. So make sure you're doing that, your rotator cuff stuff that should help you out. Um, but look up some pitching. I know there's some great guys. You go pro baseball on YouTube. Um, he has, he was a professional pitcher and he has some great information for sp- specific for pitchers. So that'll help. And as far as your second part, do I make a film of game tips and or just email them and about all about recruiting? Um, check out Hot Corner Recruiting. That's the biggest thing I can tell you. It's seven dollars. It's on my website. Um, you can go to dynamitehitting.com/recruiting. Dynamitehitting.com/recruiting. Seven bucks. Get that. I mean, literally, it'll probably save you thousands of dollars in scholarship money. You know, um, but it, it's just it would take too long to explain here. Uh, bottom line, make make a game tape and email them. But there's a right and wrong way to do it, and I explain that in Hot Corner Recruiting. It's an hour long video course, and I'm giving it to you for seven bucks. So just go to dynamitehitting.com/recruiting and get that. Anybody who wants to play at the next level, I recommend that. Uh, seven bucks. I mean, you can't beat that. Okay. Okay, so hitting. Hitting is this guy's biggest problem. I'm a solid defender at my position, just not hitting all that great. I've yet to make it past wood bat leagues. Thanks for the help. Okay, uh, you have yet to make it past wood bat leagues. So I'm assuming that you don't hit well with wood bats. I think that's what you're you're saying. Um, <clears throat> so hitting is your biggest thing. Um, okay, well, wood bats have a much smaller sweet spot than... Uh, aluminum bats do so if if you were to just take a bat like this is a wood bat um, an aluminum sweet spot might be from basically here where my finger is all the way to about there might be the sweet spot for an aluminum bat so I mean that's probably I mean that's a significant that's more than six inches probably seven or eight inches on an aluminum bat a wood bat however The sweet spot is much, much smaller. The sweet spot is probably in between my hands there. Pretty much, honestly, pretty much about as wide as a baseball, maybe maybe like a baseball and a half. But the sweet spot's much smaller. That's probably why you haven't made it past your wood bat league. So something to focus on, uh, like I've talked about before in this video, you need to start playing a little bit of pepper. Um, So really focus on your hand-eye coordination and hitting the ball on the barrel consistently. Uh, you can obviously consciously focus on that in BP and doing your T work. You need to focus on really hitting the ball on the barrel because wood bats are not as forgiving as aluminum. So you're going to end up breaking them. You're not going to be as good of a hitter with wood bats. Um, you're not going to get as many blooper base hits and stuff like that. Um, another thing you can do is you can hit small objects. You hear these stories about all these big league, big time names uh, and they'll have, you know, their dads throw them little grains of rice or little, you know, the Gatorade cover tops. They throw them in there, um, you know, like the margarine, the butter tops, you know, coaches will throw those in there. So really focus on hitting some things that are smaller than a baseball. Um, I've done that before. I still do that. I hit some discs occasionally. And that really seems to help me. Um, you know, wood bats, it's a transi- transition, but the biggest thing I can tell you is you got to hit the ball on the barrel consistently. That's the name of the game. For me, the main problem is timing and when to properly load. Every aspect about timing is my problem right now. How can I fix this and what drills should I do? Well, I already pretty much answered this question, so um, if you haven't listened to that part, go back and uh, – yeah, dance with the pitcher. That's the biggest thing for timing. Dance with the pitcher. When to properly load. Um, I like to load when the pitcher loads pretty much. And if you watch big league guys, uh, a lot of the times their front foot will hit the ground when the ball is about halfway to the plate. So um, a drill that you can do that will really help with this actually is to turn on a big league game and stand up in your living room. And, you know, obviously these guys are throwing mid to upper 90s. So... Uh, it might be a little bit um, different for your level of play because you're probably a high school player or, or something like that. But um, try to load when uh, – try to try to 
pretend like you were the hitter in uh, in that game and figure out when you would load. Just go through a couple, like figure out when you would start everything, your entire motion, and then go back and look at when the big leaguers started their motion. And you might be early, you might be later than them, but try and get on sync with them because those guys obviously have the best timing of any baseball players in the world. They're the best. So, um, so uh, that should help you. How to generate more power, and my son rolls the top hand a lot. Can't get him to stop. Okay, for more power, the biggest thing, lift weights. I love working out. Um, that's going to help you. Obviously, your son, he's going to he's gonna grow, and uh, he's going to mature. So um, keep lifting weights. Get as strong as you possibly can. Get fundamentally sound. Uh, my Dynamite Hitting course, we teach you basic mechanics in there. And then we also talk about mental approach and things like that. So I always recommend that to any hitter, um, like I said before. Um, but for for the power thing, you can't go wrong with lifting weights, even if your son's a little bit younger. Um, there's studies out there that show that no lifting weights doesn't stunt growth or anything like that. So lift weights, um, you know, eat right, do all that sort of thing. Make sure mechanics are fundamentally sound, and and the power will come. Focus on hitting the ball hard, you know, consistently. You know, hitting the ball on the barrel is the biggest thing. As he matures and as he gets older, the power thing is going to come. And for rolling the top hand, this is what I like to do for anybody that 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 rolls over, does one of these where they get to the, the, the ball and they just kind of like weakly roll over. Um, I like to, it's kind of old school, but take him into the woods. I don't know if you have woods around you or um, take him, you know, anywhere there's a tree or something like that and get an axe. Okay, and what I want you to do is have him put the tree just where the plate would be a little bit out in front. So have the tree maybe, you know, a foot out in front of him or something like that and have him hold the axe like a baseball bat. And I want him to load, take a big load and a big stride and hit that tree. And it not only will be a great workout, but it'll also re make him realize that if he rolls his top hand over weekly like that, he literally can break his wrist, um, you know, hitting that big old tree with an axe. Now, obviously, um, he's going to change after the first one if it hurts. He's not literally going to break his wrist unless he continues to do it over and over and over again. But I think that will really teach him palm up, palm down at contact. That's how every hitter should be at contact if they were to open their fingers is palm up, palm down like that. So that'll, I mean, that's something you can tell him palm up, palm down. Think about that. Um, think about, you know, cutting the baseball in half. That should help. One other thing for power. Um, I like to hit tires. Actually, if you have a heavy punching bag, you can hit that with a baseball bat or my dad actually created this thing where you stick a pole in the ground. So say this is a pole and then you wrap a tire around it. Um, so you cut a hole through the tire, you, you, you put the tire, uh, down like this. So the tires, the tire sitting on there kind of like this. And what you do is you turn it and you hit the tire and you try and make it spin around the pole as many times as you can. Um, hitting a tire, that's a great forearm workout and it'll really teach you to drive through the baseball. Um, and last thing for power, you can actually put a deflated basketball or something like that. You can put that on a tee. Hopefully it'll stay on there and uh, have him drive that and, you know, just something heavier than a baseball. That'll help. Okay. Coach, you are a huge help to me whenever I get any or whenever I have questions about anything next level. Well, thank you. What would be the best plan for me to execute to get the most exposure to college coaches over the summer if I live in the United Kingdom? I've been to one big showcase on the West Coast, and I've been talking with coaches from specific school that I'm interested in. A travel team is a little too costly because I wouldn't uh, have anywhere to really sleep, but I was thinking some more focused camps at schools I'm interested in would be a good idea. Um, you know, after going through the showcase deal and the camps deal myself and getting recruited and all that type of stuff, you know, I've really been there. I've done that just a few years ago. And I wouldn't really recommend the showcases in the camps. Um, that's really big right now. And the reason why is because it's a great money maker for, um, for baseball companies as well as baseball schools. That's what it is. I mean, my schools have always hosted a camp 
And honestly, the coaches are more concerned at that point in the time about their current team that year instead of recruiting. I mean, unless you're an absolute stud and you completely ball out at those showcases, a lot of the times they're just taking your money. That's what I found at least. I mean, there's some big name showcases out there that I wouldn't really recommend. Um, Especially if you live in the United Kingdom, you know, it costs a lot to travel and all that type of stuff. So Again, I would recommend Hot Corner Recruiting, dynamitehitting.com slash recruiting. You can get that. Seven bucks, an hour video training course. And there I'm going to walk you through how to email coaches, how to create a video for recruiting, uh, what to include, what not to include. I actually include a cover letter and a resume sample that you can send out to coaches. And those have been proven to work. Um, and you know, I'm literally going to teach you A to Z what you need to know. So that's that's really all you need. Um, I mean, you can set up some recruiting profiles on different websites online for free. But uh, I don't know if I'd recommend the showcases in the camps. I mean, that's kind of just my personal opinion. You might have different luck with it. But personally, I haven't really uh, seen a whole lot from that. Okay, um, But definitely get hot corner recruiting. Thanks a lot and keep up the good work. Thank you. I will. Hey, coach, I need help with better at bats. And he put confidence in parentheses. Okay. Uh, like I've said a million times in this video, confidence comes with success. So confidence, you know, you know, you need to keep repping things out, keep taking a lot of swings, and confidence will come. Confidence will come. Uh, better at bats. Um, big thing with better at bats is to. Uh, swing at strikes and lay off things that aren't strikes. I mean, it sounds simple, but this is a simple game. It's not easy, but it's simple. Um, better at bats, you know, you need to lay off pitches that aren't strikes. Try to hit your pitch, especially early in the count. Don't try to hit a pitcher's pitch. Hit your pitch. So if you hit the inside fastball well, be looking for an inside fastball and be ready to hit a missile. Uh, and don't miss it when you get there. But hit your pitch and, um, you know, just just battle up there, fight, be competitive, step in the box and compete. That's the biggest thing. If you forget everything else, step in the box and be a competitor. That's the big thing. What to do when you are up to bat? Uh, drop the back shoulder and hit the ball 500 feet. No, don't do that. Um, you hit the ball 500 feet, don't necessarily drop the back shoulder. But uh, I don't know. I try to be really offensive up there like i said before you have a weapon in your hand hitting is fun so take out your driver go deep sea fishing when you get a pitch that you like you know put a good swing on it and with two strikes you know don't let the guy behind you decide whether you're out or whether it's you know it's a ball if it's close enough to that you can touch it with your bat put the ball player at least fight it off um but you know what to do when you're up up to to play you know have fun be ready to hit the ball hard and and you know, hit it into a gap and run. That's that's what you need to do when you're up to bat. The only thing I hit is ground balls. How do I get more lift on the ball and hit more line drives? Okay, there's a saying out there. Ground balls turn into line drives. Line drives turn into home runs. And fly balls turn into outs. So it's good that you're hitting the ball on the ground and not in the air. Because guys that hit fly balls a lot, they're not going to gonna really advance levels. Um, the only thing you hit is ground balls. So getting more lift on the ball... You know, a big thing that I would focus on is, and it's something small. I mean, I haven't seen your swing on video or anything, but you need to, it sounds simple, but here's my baseball. Right now, if you're hitting a lot of ground balls, you're hitting the ball on top. You need to hit the ball more in the center of the baseball. That's the big thing. Not underneath, not on top, right in the center. So maybe try and see the ball a little bit better for a little bit longer and focus on hitting the ball consistently right in the sweet spot and right in the middle, the center of the baseball. That'll help you out. Um, but it's not about achieving lift. You don't you don't lift the ball literally with your swing. You don't try and lift the ball. That's something that you could be doing. Like I said, I haven't seen your swing. But if you try last second, try and lift the ball, you might be bringing your hands up artificially, weirdly, and you know the pitch is coming in like this. And if you try and at the last second lift the ball, your hands might be coming up and you might be just just kind of cueing the ball, glancing blow. So. Um, something that might help you as well is, like I said before in this video, hit some smaller objects, you know, some little discs or, you know, um, little teeny 
airsoft BBs or uh, little grains of rice or Gatorade tops or whatever. Hit something smaller than a baseball. Focus on squaring it up. Okay, here's another one. Getting lift on the ball and hitting for power. I've discussed both of those already. My biggest problem is staying consistent at the plate. Once things stop going my way, I tend to think too much about everything and things just get worse. Uh... Well, like I said, slumps happen, and you have to realize that baseball is a game of ups and downs. And some really good advice my dad gave me one time is, you know, after playing pro ball and stuff, never let the highs get too high and never get the lows, never let the lows get too low in this game. I really think your mental approach has to stay consistent for you to stay consistent at the plate. Your mechanics are going to be there as long as you have, uh, you know, you've, you've, taking a lot of swings, quality swings. Your mechanics are going to be there. So staying consistent at the plate, you have to have a consistent mental approach. You have to show up at the park every single day having fun, and you have to have that mentality that you're going to have success. And success isn't getting a hit. That's one of the biggest misconceptions in our game is that success is getting a hit. Success is just hitting the ball hard, doing something productive for your team, You know, walking, laying down a bunt. You don't necessarily have to get a hit to have success in this game. So, you know, staying consistent, it's tough. Like I said, you know, if you ground out or make an out, um, not necessarily ground out, but if you make an out seven times out of 10, you only get three hits, you're an all-star. It's what you do with those seven failures, whether you drive in runs or whether you move guys over or whatever, it's what you do with those seven failures that really define you as a hitter. So, um, and when things stop going your way, man, you just got to... Like I said, don't get too high, don't get too low. It's a game. Don't take it out of, um, don't make it bigger than it has to be, and you know th that'll help you out. Just, just you know, have fun, relax. It's just a game at the end of the day. Hi Justin, ninety percent of pitches I'm seeing this season are away, having trouble hitting away. Well, I got news for you. If you want to play at the next level, if you want to play in college, then you're going to have to learn how to hit the away pitch because that's majority of what you're going to see. Now, sure, you're going to get some inside pitches every now and then, but some ridiculous number, like I said, um, it's something like 70% of strikeouts happen on the outer half of the plate. And good pitching, that's what they're taught. They're taught to live away, and they're taught to live down in the strike zone. So if you can't hit that, then you obviously need to make a change. And the biggest thing that I can tell you, the best advice I can give you for hitting the away pitch, besides letting the ball get a little bit deeper, um, hitting it a little bit further back in your stance, and hitting the ball where it's pitched. So if it's outside, don't try and do too much with it. Hit it to up the middle or um the opposite field. Besides that, um, you really need to just work on it. You need to put in the man hours and put in the blood, the sweat, and the tears, really. I mean, that's what it comes down to, um, doing it over and over and over again until it becomes muscle memory. And uh, that's, that's the biggest secret to success. I can't give you some magical pill or potion or anything like that. Uh, if you want to learn how to hit any pitch well, um, you have to just practice it. I struggled with hitting curveballs for a while, and now I'm definitely getting the hang of on any pitch, a curveball, a slider, or whatever, um, you know, good quality pitching, you know, 90 plus, getting the hang of hitting the fastball, being ready for the fastball, but also being able to sit back and adjust and hit the off speed stuff. So uh, it took me a lot of work um, throughout the past few years to be able to get to this point. And you need to do the same thing. You need to work on it every single day in BP. If your coach is pounding you inside uh, in BP and you're just pulling everything, well, tell him to throw it away so you can work on that. Or if he just keeps missing in, just get a little bit further off the plate and work on it. You have to work on it. And, of course, you can do it with T work as well. Set it up on the outside half and work on hitting it to the opposite direction. But that's the secret, man. There's no pill or potion. Hard work. That's, that's what's going to get you there. All right. I'm sorry, Coach. Been busy. Haven't had time to respond. He batted tonight. Got one out of three hits. Also, I really appreciate your uh, response. Now the time for... Not the time for extra things such as the recruiting video or hitting videos for him because he's only 16, but I will keep a watch of what's going on. All right, well, uh, good luck to your son. Thanks for tuning in. All right, my son is 11 and hitting the ball really hard with great bat speed in the cage, and in the game he doesn't seem to hit the ball as hard and lunges on his front foot. 
So how do I fix this? Well, I would say that your son might be a little bit early. Uh, I see a lot of guys that have a good cage swing and then they get in the game. And this has happened to me too, is that um, you might get a little bit too amped up during games. And this isn't a bad thing. It's it, it's good. He's ready to hit. He's excited about hitting. He might be up there like, oh, baby, throw me that fastball. And as soon as he sees it's over the plate, his eyes light up. And, you know, he gets really, really excited. And he might just be a little bit early. So um, that's, that's something that you can do um, is just try to really get him to load a little bit later and see if that helps. And also, I think it'd be beneficial for you to videotape his swing in the cage and then in the game and see if you see anything mechanically. Um, and the biggest thing I would watch for for um, the lunging aspect is overstriding because overstriding will cause him to lunge. So it might be that he's um, just simply overstriding in the cage. Maybe his stride's only that much. And in the game, it's like something ridiculous. Um, and if that's the case, then you're just going to have to work with him uh, maybe put something in front of his foot to where he can't cross over that barrier or whatever. Or, uh, I mean, that'll help him shorten his stride. And that'll help eliminate the lunging. But as long as he's doing well in the cage, uh, you know, at, at age 11, um, he'll get there. That's that's a good sign. All right, getting my front foot down too early. I have a tendency to have troubles staying back. Okay, well, you've probably heard the saying over and over from coaches or maybe parents or whatever um, that you need to get your front foot down early. And I'm not a fan of that saying at all. You don't need to get your front foot down early. You need to get your front foot down on time. Uh, you don't see any big league hitters where they do everything so mechanical to where they're like, okay, load, stride, and then they're completely stopped, and then they go forward. Everything is a fluid motion. The guys that hit bombs and you know triples off the wall and stuff like that, that everything is in such good tempo and rhythm, and that's the way that you need to be. So don't worry about getting your front foot down early. Get it down on time, and if you just think about that, um, it's it's really really going to help you if you if you make a conscious adjustment yourself. Um, so just say I don't have to get my front foot down early. Just get it down on time. Be on time and on plane. Um, and you know getting it down early is probably uh, what's making you not be able to stay back as well. But just think about one more uh, little visual for you. Think about if I get my front foot down early. If I load and stride. Look at me right now. Okay, the pitch is probably still in the pitcher's hand, and I'm at a complete standstill. So I don't know if you ever feel like you might get frozen at the plate or whatever, but I know that if I'm not moving at all when the ball's in the air, then I'm screwed because it's tough to overcome inertia when you're just sitting here. And then a lot of the times you're not going to have any power. Even if you make contact, you're just going to be kind of throwing your hands at the ball, and you're not going to have any power. So, um, yeah, that's just – I mean – you got to focus on getting your foot down on time, not early. Watch big leaguers. Watch when they get their front foot down, and that will help you. Okay, this person's wondering about their strength. It says he's been able to cut down his 60 time from a 721 to a 686. Hey, man, that's that's pretty good. Uh, anything under a 7 is, is good. But I never can get any gains in the gym. Well, gains in the gym, as long as you're following a program, not just going in the gym and winging it, as long as you're following a program and you are working hard, working as hard as you can, trying to get the most out of it, then I would say it's probably nutrition. Um, you know, a lot of guys that are trying to put on muscle mass, they don't realize how much how much they have to actually eat in order to uh, put on mass and um, put on size. So it's all really a numbers game. If you're trying to get bigger, if you're trying to add weight, build muscles, you need to eat and consume more calories than you burn. That's the biggest thing. So focus on that and you'll make some gains in the gym. Uh, if you start uh, eating a little bit more, you're gonna your muscles are going to gain in size and they're going to gain in strength for sure. All right. Hey, Justin, my name is Banks. I have found that I've had one problem at the plate for a good while. I rarely strike out in game and make more contact than anyone on the team, but it seems that everything I've hit for the past few years have been grounders. Some weak and some really hard, but it just seems that I don't hit line drives as much as I used to. If I can sometime, I'll get my parents to video me hitting in a game and I'll send it to you, but if you could give me a diagnostic when I do send a video, that'd be awesome. Also, in the cage, I'm an excellent hitter and don't seem to hit many grounders at all. All seem to be hard line drives. Anyways, thanks a lot. 
Okay, first thing, yes, get your parents to record you. Um, I'd like to see you in a game, actually, because um, you say you hit grounders in games a lot. Um, so get your parents to record you. That'd be a good idea. And just email it to me. I know you have my email. So send me that because it's tough for me to, you know, give you advice when I haven't seen your swing. Um, so basically you're hitting ground balls too much. Well, the first thing I want to tell you is I would much rather be hitting ground balls and fly balls because there's an old saying out there and I know it's true. Uh, ground balls turn into line drives, line drives turn into home runs and fly balls turn into outs. So it's much better for you to hit a ground ball than a fly ball. Look, ground balls can get through. A lot of big league guys get a lot of base hits off of ground balls. Uh, they don't just hit, um, you know, line drives all over the field all the time. They hit some hard uh, ground balls that get through the infield, or sometimes you'll get an infield single on a high chopper or whatever. I mean, that's the game of baseball. So it's better to hit hard ground balls than um, fly balls for sure. And, um, you know, it's tough for me to give you advice. Like I said, the best thing that you can do is send me that video of your swing so I can really dive in and see what you're doing. But Hey, I like to keep the game simple. Um, you know, I, I don't know what your issue is, but maybe it could be something literally as simple as you're hitting the top of the baseball. Uh, your swing plane's good or whatever, but you're just hitting the top of the baseball. Or maybe you're swinging down on the baseball and just barely cueing it. Um, maybe you're swinging up. You have a little uppercut, and as the ball's coming in, you're barely cueing it, just kind of like a glancing blow. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not really sure, but it could be as simple as that, as you're just hitting the top of the baseball. So try to focus on hitting the center of it. You know, you can do some some drills where you try to hit smaller objects than a baseball, um, and that, that might help a little bit. Let me know if it does, but try to record your, your swing and send that to me. That'd be, that'd be, I'd be able to help you a little bit better. All right, my coach says I'm just slapping the ball. How can I fix that? Uh, okay, well, if a coach told me that I was just slapping the ball, what I would think that he would he would mean by that is that I'm just kind of, you know, lackadaisical, going through the motions. Uh, when the pitch comes in, I'm kind of just all hands, just kind of slapping the ball, not really using my body. And the biggest thing when I try to think of a hitter that would just slap the ball is I think of somebody that's not really aggressive, somebody that's not offensive, that that power of like, mm, yes, aggressiveness. I'm going to, when he gives me that fastball right over the plate, I'm going to hit that thing 500 feet. I'm going to put a good swing on it. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to round the bases. You know, you don't have that aggressive, like, come on, baby, come on, meat, throw that thing in there. And that's something, that's something mental, I think, more than anything. Maybe you're one of those guys that's a little too concerned with mechanics and you might be up at the, the plate, you know, like super still and, okay, I got to load and then stride and then hips and hands. And you can't hit like that, man. You got to, you got to remember, this is a weapon. This baby is a weapon and you have to use this thing and attack your pitch. Don't hit a pitcher's pitch, hit your pitch. But when you get it, don't miss and attack the baseball. So I think one fix for you, you're just slapping the ball right now. For you, not for everybody, but for you, I would recommend try to swing a little bit harder. You know, hit the ball, try and literally hit the ball straight back through the pitcher, not at him through him. Okay. And you're not obviously going to do that, but Focus on crushing the ball, um, not just hitting the ball at contact and stopping. You need to crush the ball and drive through it and just get a little bit more aggressive. Get a little fire underneath you, and I think that will help you, okay? So not everybody, but I think you in this case, just try it. See if it helps. Okay, guys, two more questions. All right, uh, this one's short. Barrel drop on launch. Okay, when I read this, when you first sent me this, the first thing I could think of, let me show you really quick. First thing I thought of when you said barrel drop at launch, I was just trying to imagine the stance, you know? And the first thing I thought of is when I got into a launch position, when you said barrel drop, I thought it meant like this. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, but that'd be the barrel kind of just kind of just dropping. So I don't know how far, if it's insane or if it's just dropping a little bit. I'm not really sure. Um, if it's just a little bit, I wouldn't even be too concerned unless the results aren't what you're looking for. But I know some really good college hitters actually that will even start with their bat almost, as you can see me like this, or maybe it'd be better from behind angle. They almost start their bat flat 
And a lot of the philosophy is if I start my bat flat, now their hands are back here. It's not like this, but um, they're like, their philosophy is if I start my hands with a, or start with a flat bat, then I'm already on plane pretty much with the pitch. So um, one other thing though, if it's causing, if, you know, if you're starting like this and your bat's more upright and then when you load, it drops like this. One thing that might be caused from, and I don't know your stance and your setup, but if this back elbow is tucked, I mean, which is fine. A lot of great hitters tuck it. A lot of great hitters will have it up. But something you could try is to have it up. Because what I think is um, if you have it tucked in like this, it might be easier for you to let that bat head drop. But if your elbow is up like this and you pull the bat back, like you're pulling back a bow, a bow and arrow, I mean, literally the only way that your barrel can drop at that point is if you like almost drop the bat out of your hands. So I think that'll help. You know, you don't have to chicken wing it way up here, but shoulder height are, are a little bit lower. And you know, just try that out and let me let me know if it helps. But like I said, if 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 you're still hitting the ball fine and you just don't like the way it looks on camera, um, I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Okay, last question. Actually, I'm sorry, two more questions. Uh, these are the last two here. So specific baseball workouts in season, especially for pitchers. Um, and also how to have good nutrition during the school year, like healthy lunches or breakfasts, etc. Okay, um, first of all, I'm not a pitching expert, so you might want to find somebody on YouTube or there's a lot of free information online guys that have pitched I know you go pro baseball he has some great pitching videos he talks about nutrition and workouts for pitchers I've never really pitched I pitched a little bit in high school but I'm not an expert in pitching I'm a hitter and an outfielder so um, know a little bit more about infield than I than I would for sure um, pitching um, but I'm not really comfortable, comfortable or qualified to teach pitching. So I know lifting weights is important for anybody. And I know pitchers have to take care of their arm a little bit more. So do like some tubing exercises and rotator cuffs. Um, but, you know, long toss has really helped me. Uh, and then as far as the nutrition part, um, you know, you guys know what good food is and what's not. Uh, don't eat... You know, I, I really like um, chicken. I have chicken all the time. I think it tastes good. Some people don't like it. But I have chicken, which is a high-quality source of protein. I have chicken all the time. Chicken, rice, um, vegetables, fruit. I have a lot of protein shakes. Um, but but bottom line, you, you know what's healthy. You know that fruits and vegetables are good for you. And you know to stay away from candy and soda and stuff. So I recommend for your nutrition aspect, I mean, go with your gut. Obviously, you have to eat according to your goals. If you're trying to put on size, you need to eat more calories. If you're trying to cut some fat, you need to be in a caloric deficit. Um, but bottom line, you know what's healthy and what's not. I mean, stay away from the sugary stuff and just follow your gut. If you think, yeah, I probably shouldn't eat that, then you probably shouldn't. Okay, last question here. Hey, man, I've signed to play Division One ball at University of Central Arkansas as a catcher. Hey, man, that's good. That's very good. I appreciate all the videos, but I have one question you might be able to help me out with. I'm trying to put on some weight, and I drink a protein shake after workouts each time, but do you know of anything that works real well with weight gain? Okay, so the protein shakes are good. Uh, I have a protein shake immediately after I work out almost every time now. Um, so you're on the right track there. Um, as far as real weight gain, like you said, you know, I wouldn't be too concerned with gaining weight as a baseball player. I would be more concerned about gaining strength. And I know, you know, I have some goals about where I'd like to be as far as weight wise and stuff. So if you really are interested in gaining weight, um, like I said, it's, it's a numbers game. So you just have to bottom line, eat more, eat way more calories than you burn and you'll gain weight. I've heard of some methods out there. Uh, you can Google it. GoMad. That stands for gallon of milk a day. Um, that's gallon of whole milk or 2% or whatever kind of milk you'd like. But you basically drink a gallon of that a day. And that's really more targeted for um, skinny guys that really struggle to put on weight. So don't know if I'd recommend that. But you can do some research on it. Um, but keep doing the protein shakes. I would say up your food. You're probably still not eating enough. And, uh, 
Be more concerned, though, with your strength because, you know, football is a little bit different where, you know, if you're an offensive lineman or a linebacker, size matters a little bit more, mass times velocity, you know. Um, but baseball, I mean, Dustin Pedroia, you know, you see littler guys out there that still do well. So as long as you're strong, I would focus on lifting heavy and hard and often, but focus on that strength. Don't be too concerned with what the scale says. So that's just my two cents. Um but that pretty much wraps it up for today, guys. It's I know it's been a long video or over an hour, well over an hour now, but um, hopefully you've gotten a lot out of this. If you like these kind of videos, please let me know. Um, I'm always available to answer your guys' questions. That's what I'm here for. And I'm glad I got so many of them to answer today. And it took a little bit longer, but hopefully I was able to provide you with some valuable information. So as always, make sure you... Um, Follow me on all the social media platforms. We're on everything now. The links are below, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of that. Go get on my newsletter, dynamitehitting.com. You're going to get a free bat speed video, and then you're going to get all the newsletter emails after that. And I provide a ton of great information in there. I try to do it at least once or twice a week, sometimes a little bit more often than that. Um, and go check out the Dynamite Hitting course, of course. Uh, I recommend that to absolutely everyone, like I said, from Little League all the way through professionals. We talk about A to Z, you know, it's professional hitting instruction from me and my dad. Um, he played professional baseball in the Cardinals organization. And it goes over everything from the fundamentals all the way through the, the mental game, approach, plan, some drills, all that type of stuff. Um, and then also check out Hot Corner Recruiting, dynamitehitting.com slash recruiting. It's seven bucks. You can't beat it. And I, I would recommend that way more than going to a camp or a showcase or whatever. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. I've had some fun. And uh, subscribe on YouTube, and I'll see you guys in future videos. Have a great day, and good luck with the rest of your season.